Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Adult Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Miss Coco Bowden, and this evening, I'm going to talk about the call list, Confessions of the Lively Women, basically, the call list. Um, I think sometimes people want to know, why did we need such a huge call list, and and what did this call list consist of? The call list was, um, we came up with this call list, first of all, because it was a few of us, and we would all get together, and we would make these calls at the same time, but we would be kind of like in different cubicles. We would be in different cu- cubicles, uh, it was kind of like a job. Uh, we used to work at the insurance company. And so at the insurance company, we learned how to create lists, how to use lists, prospect lists. And that's what we did. We had a prospect list. Except for we let them give us the information. Because the first thing you want to know when you talk to somebody on live links is how old are you? This is one of the... The main questions you get asked, how old are you? Where are you from? How many kids do you have? Have you ever been married? I mean, it's the standard questions that everyone wants to know. And that turns into a call list. And at the same time, being that we need a phone number for every prospect, now we have our area codes. It was so important for us because it would be sometimes that, hey, you got my mic. No, that's my mic. No, that's the mic I know. No, that's the mic I know. And it it would uh, cause um, the women to fuss back and forth about who belonged to who, who had them first. So when we started with the call list, we were able to identify the guys that we were talking to and to um, keep them separated. If one of us already had the guy, the other one had to let him go. That was how it was. We just made that pact to do that. This was not a one-woman show. This, <laughs> this consisted of, it was three of us at the time, and we were just having fun. We knew what we wanted to do. Um, When people don't have nothing to do better, then you start doing stupid things like we did. And you start making these lists and getting these men all excited, thinking that they have a good woman coming to them, not knowing that the woman is (laughs) really... Not even, really don't even think they, they are attractive, to be honest. Some of them were just dead, broken, bone ugly. And we made them feel it too. If they were broke, we would still talk to them. I mean, cause to us, well, I'm gonna say some of us would still talk to them. I would still talk to them, but I can't speak for the other, the other women didn't play that. They wouldn't, <laughs> they wouldn't talk to them. If they were broke, they was gone. They was like on to the next. Where me, I would be like, well, I'm sorry you going through that. Sometimes I would like have that soft spot for that person because I could tell in their voice that they really were going through something and I didn't, it's just certain ones I didn't want to make it harder for. And so once I just found out, I just moved on to the next one as well. And the call list was good at helping us identify these guys who we did not want to link up with. If we was to talk to one and they were abusive, we would mark an X beside their name and put down that they were violent or abusive mark mark out their name in red that lets us know hey if you get enough if you get if you get a call from this number right here or you get a guy and his number starts like this if you get this number you don't want to talk to this guy so we we stayed briefing each other daily because this was a daily thing we didn't just do this like on weekends this was daily we we need to talk to these guys daily because 
these guys, um, they was what was keeping us going at the time that we all were in the mix of this. And I guess in a way, we were keeping them going too. Now, one of the... One of the things about the callers list that we didn't play about is if one woman did get with a man and he did want to really take care of her, we didn't play about that. We allowed that to happen. Another thing about the callers list is that when we did a majority of time, I'm going to say a majority of time, not all the time, but if one of us had a guy that really wanted to meet us and we were like, yeah, we need to go check this one out. We're feeling this one. Then the other two had to find somebody nearby or within that same circle to talk to as well. That way we would all be together because again, some of these guys were just as dangerous as we were with words. They were, they were violent. Some of these guys were. And so what we would do is we would team up together and we go meet these guys. Um, that brings a story to mind. The tidy whitey guy, he was going to be later on on my list. As a matter of fact, let me tell you what number he is. Let me go see what I got in my notes about him, but he was going to be toward the end but he's actually number 46, and we'll call him Chi-Chi the Jumper. And one thing about him is uh, you can just assume these guys are married until you know for sure, okay? It doesn't matter how firm and strong a man is in his speaking to you, he may have a woman. He may have a woman. And it just so happened that old Tidy Whitey, um, I called him Tidy Whitey. I'll tell you why in just a minute. Tidy Whitey had two other friends. At this specific time, it, we went on the road and it was four of us. We went to a 704 area code. And the four of us, we just made sure that everybody had somebody. Because... At this time, Tidy Whitey was sounding like he may be, you know, very promising and, you know, somebody good to hang with and, you know, just chill. But we wasn't for sure, so that's why we all went. We un went underneath different names. At this time, I was Coco with a C and not the K. And um, I'm not going to give out the other names because... I would let them tell their story whenever they want to tell their story. But it was one, two, it was five of us in all that traveled that day to the 704 area code. And, <laughs> okay, let me tell you how he got the name Tidy Whitey. So we spent the night at Tidy Whitey's house, okay? Tidy Whitey had this big barbecue thing going on, and he was like, invite Everybody can come because, you know, there's somebody here for all of you. And we did it, and we had dinner. And it was, like, the worst experience ever because this is what happened. Please excuse the pause, but every now and then I get choked up. But this is what happened. Tidy Whitey started out being okay. I mean, for real, he was really a chill dude, and I was like, yes, Tidy Whitey was actually for me. That's who Tidy Whitey was for. <laughs> this is some funny stuff now I'm thinking on it. But uh, Tidy Whitey got us there and needed something else from the store, so... Two of the other girls said, we'll go to the store. And the other two said, well, we'll stay here with you. And that was cool with me. The other two that went to the store just happened to meet the other friends on the way out going to the store. And then now it was four of them going to the store. And the other three of us are still back there with Tidy Whitey. And Tidy Whitey gets to talking about, you know, 
he starts f- switching up. He's like, I didn't know you was bringing this many people with you, but he had already told me to bring, you know, this many people with me. He knew how many was coming with me. So what Tidy Whitey does is he goes and hide the chicken that he cooked. <laughs> I mean, he, he had cooked all this chicken, and he was like, well, you know, you got to give them your share of chicken. They're not getting mine. Those are your people. And that was like a big red flag right there. I was like, gosh, why did we do this? And I was like, okay, well, they can eat with me. And so they did. They ate with me. And we was kind of, we was really, like, scared to eat this food because, after we heard how he started talking, we was just automatically like, this man, something off with him. But anyways, you know, against our better judgment, we're like, well, we'll just hang on in there a little bit longer. Because keep in mind, at this time, I really don't have high esteem for myself. I really have low self-esteem at this point when I'm out here doing all this and, again, I'm not in connection with God. I'm not even thinking about God. So we decided to spend the night. Everyone had a room. And most of them, they all slept in the same room. And me and him, me and Tidy Whitey Guy, was the only one that didn't sleep in the room with everybody else. Everybody else was like living room on chairs and the flows, you know, just like that. And because he was in a one one bed bedroom apartment, that right there was a red flag too. Because he had said he lived in a big house, but he wasn't in a big house. Um, <laughs> so we got back there to the bed, and you know, I'm thinking, you know, yes, we're gonna go to sleep, and we did not drink much. Some of the ladies had drinks, and some of us were sitting back like <laughs> we don't really feel this and I was one that I drunk a little something but not a lot so I get in the bed and he lays at the bottom of the bed and I finally doze off and fall asleep what a mistake I woke up and this negro was over top of me Jumping around in the bed, <laughs> jumping up and down on the mattress in his tidy whities talking about, get up, it's Mr. Good Time. I'm looking like, what in the world? And I mean, this he's jumping, I mean, he was short anyway, you know, he was like five feet, five feet tall, maximum. And he was just uh, jumping around, and I'm looking like, dude, uh uh-uh, what you doing? He said, come on, Coco, you didn't come all this way for nothing, did you? I said, yes, I did. And so at that moment, I couldn't take it. I almost threw up thinking about it. I was so disgusted by him. I was like, just wait till morning come. Oh, I got a story to tell them. And then... We got up that morning after I got through all of that jumping and carrying on. It took him a while to stop jumping up and down on that bed. Mm. When I tell you that I've never seen anything like that before. I mean, where in the world did he? It was like a frog just boing, 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 just jumping up and down. And morning came because he finally... He finally took his butt to sleep. He he really had to get drunk to fall asleep. Because at first the alcohol had hyped him up. And then the alcohol was the very thing that brought him down. He turned out to be an alcoholic too, by the way. After he finished doing all of this, what comes next is we're in there eating breakfast. And he bursts out and say, says, do you know you got hair all down the side of your face? And we like, what? Who who stops and tells a woman that you got her down the side of your face? It's called my sideburns. I've got sideburns. Y'all, I got thick sideburns, okay? And this particular day, 
I didn't shave. I, I wasn't a shaver back then, so I didn't think no need to shave or anything. And I've been shaving ever since, long story short. But, yeah, I've been shaving ever since on that side where my sideburns are. But it was so insulting. And I can tell you, out of that live link connection came out some... It came out some good friends for, for the ones that went with me. They had a great time. Like when they went to the friend's house and started chilling, man, they said they had nothing but goodness, nothing but fun. And to this day, they still have fun with the friends. As far as Tidy Whitey goes, turns out Tidy Whitey was white. I mean, not white. Tidy. I'm sorry about it. <clears throat> Hold on a minute, y'all. <laughs> I got tickled. Turns out Tidy Whitey was married. And he had kids that had just went off to college. And that's why the apartment was a one-bedroom apartment. <sighs> that's why the call list is necessary. And it was necessary for us so that when we mark these guys off, we don't go back to them. And if they try to get back in contact with us, we make sure that we hurt their feelings. When he tried to get back in contact with me. Now, he did try to get back in contact with me several times through and by the friends that that I had brought up. And the friends that he brought, they, they hit it off great. But we didn't. Because I ain't like nothing about him waking me up, jumping over top of my head. You know, you just end up with these type of people. You never know who you're getting when you uh, call these chat lines. And I found out the hard way who I was getting. He was a jumper. So when he called me back, he said, is there any chance we can go out again? I said, nope, and hell no. And it was with the quickness. And then he was, <laughs> he was like, but I like you so much. And I was like, but have you looked at yourself lately? You, you're you not my type. I mean, I just said it so nasty, too. I was like, you, you're you not my type, man. You, you couldn't even feed me. You gave me one piece of chicken with some barbecue sauce on the side. You didn't even take time to make any size. No. I'm a plus-size woman. I'm not dealing with you. So, again... I heard him, I told him he wasn't good enough for me, and that was that. And every time he tried to reach me thereafter, it was the same answer. You're not good enough for me. You never will be. It ain't no amount of money, because he got a settlement one time and tried to call me to come around him. And I said, it ain't no amount of money that can make me go back to you or to your house. Tidy whitey. That all that jumping and carrying on. No, I couldn't handle that. So the call list came in handy because now he was off my list. And if, if one of the other ones wanted to pick him up, it was cool with me because, uh, which they didn't because we had this rule where we, we really tried to stay away from, uh, the guys that somebody else had already talked to. We tried to stay away from them. But sometimes, you know, it is what it is, whatever happens. Once you throw them in the street. Uh, he's free game to anybody who wants him. Once that man's out there in the street, I mean, who are you to say, hey, you can't talk to her, you can't talk to him? You know, that's not your call. So once I threw him away, I was done, point blank. I ain't look back. That's why we need to call this. And the call list was, it was a savior because now we had the information we needed, and we could pass it along to one another. We could detail one another with what type of guy this was. And you know what else about the call list? I want to say this before I forget, but the call list also, it was like this. If there was a guy that I could not handle, and I and I couldn't, you know, fulfill the needs that he needed me to fulfill. And I'm and I'm speaking on, you know, talking wise because sometimes these chats can get a little, you know, dirty. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They can get a little dirty. If I couldn't handle that, I would pass that on, 
pass that dude on to a more experienced speaker than me because I wasn't always the one that was experienced with words. It was some things I did not know how to do, and I had to be taught how to speak those things to guys and how to talk back to them. I had to learn because when I first started out, it was all about the pain. It was about inflicting pain, but surely I had to learn how to... Also, let it be about some pleasurable moments, too. If I want to keep it real, there was moments when I needed it to be a nice, sweet conversation. And I had to know how to change up and how to get that conversation that I wanted. And so one of the girls, they taught me everything I need to do. They schooled me really good. And I turned out to be pretty good at it. Not as good as they were, but I mean, because I was still a little shy and bashful, but um, they let me sit in on a few of their calls, and I learned from it. And from there on, my call list was popping. Yep, my call list was good from that moment on.